and welcome to the cook-in this is live cooking at the crib season two episode five ramen and cocktails thank you guys for joining us this is a big day we're welcoming all of our friends from the bay with us today hey. joining the sack crew that's been rocking hard for two months with us welcome bay all day um, we have some fun and exciting things you know that when you tap in with Last Supper Society, you are tapping in with the community too. So this week, 10% of proceeds are going to the Loveland Foundation. We will talk a little bit more about that and dig in with our guest. But first, it's Friday. We wanna let you guys know what we're sipping on to unwind. My girl Taylor's gonna let you know with the sip. What's up y'all? My name is Taylor and thank you for tuning in. Uh, to the sit brought to us by Forge Gin. Um, I am an Oakland bartender and have been at Starline Social Club for the past few years as a manager and bartender. And um, today I'm thankful to work with the guys from Last Supper and with Forge Gin to bring you my cocktail, Sippin' Me Amar. So um, if you guys already have the kit, then everything that's in the bottle is ready to go. Um, but you are gonna just shake it and dilute it a little bit. So in your bottle, there is three quarters lime juice. Um, and I already started with a little bit of Angostura and the pinch of salt in my tin. And then I have half an ounce of burnt orange Cointreau. That's like one of my favorite tricks when I'm doing cocktails. I feel like fire is kind of underrated. Like we use it a lot when we're cooking, but not necessarily when we're doing drinks. So that's a good way to just elevate a simple cocktail. Um, and then I also have half an ounce of a macro lime scissor, um, which is basically a thick, simple syrup made from kefir lime leaves. It gives a nice fragrance to the cocktail. And um, then I have half an ounce of coconut milk. And then I'm going to go ahead and use two ounces of forged gin. Um, this has been one of my go-to for years, even outside of Starline. It's just a solid um, London dry gin, very versatile and delicious. I've been to distillery, so I know that they take care of their stuff. <laughs> okay, so this is the part where we should be together. So you guys should have the content um, in your tin. If you don't have a tin, you can use a mason jar or a Tupperware. And then go ahead and give it a quick shake. Now, before we strain it into our drinking glass, I'm going to take a little bit of the soda water and put it in my glass first. That's just gonna incorporate your drink um, all together and give it a good mix. Okay, string that off. This looks good, it's a nice little color. Okay, and then we're gonna top it with a little bit of ice. And then the dehydrated lime wheel. Boom, and that's it. Sipping me a mar. Cheers, you guys. Enjoy. Thank you, Taylor. Cheers. That was fire. I hope you got your drink in your hand. You got something to sip on. It's Friday. We're getting a little loose. It is ramen and cocktails night, everybody. So let's get it popping. First thing, ooh, ooh, you all right? <coughs> all right. This let's is get the, it popping. Uh, let's get right it popping. So this is somebody who. <laughs> We are excited to share with you guys. This is a Bay Area native. This is somebody who caught my eye or caught my ear with her message of radical self-acceptance. 
So without further ado, I want to bring to you guys, and I need a round of applause in the chat. She has her drink. What's up to Joe Encarnacion, the digital What's up, maiden. You guys? What's <laughs> up? How are you? How are you? I know it's fucking Friday. Wait, first off, can we cuss on this show? Let's let's keep it. We got some kids in here. Let's try to keep oh, it. Okay. We got some moms it's, in here. It's you yeah. know it's filling Friday. It's yeah. it's Friday. It's <laughs> yeah. Friday in the day. We're we're trying to keep it hyphy, but like on the low level. Yeah. And Love you know we're in a mid hyphy. So <laughs> we're like a little hyphy in this moment. Yeah. <laughs> So what's up, I'm Joe? so excited to be here. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. I am super excited. I can't wait to eat some ramen. Ramen is one of my favorite meals. And yeah, let's just chop it up. Let's just, you know, get to it. Absolutely. So, so I wanted to talk a little bit. So I know who you are. Let's let the people know a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what makes your message so powerful and special. Yeah, so a little bit about me. I am a Filipino American woman. Um, I am a daughter of immigrants here in the Bay Area. I love to help women just lean into understanding what it means to be emotionally fit and sexually liberated. And I teach so many people how to really lean into the idea of radical self-acceptance, which really means being able to lean into your mess and your beauty simultaneously Mm -hmm. all at the same time. I love that. I love that. I love that. How can people tap in with you? How do people reach you? How do people connect with you if they want to take this journey of radical self-acceptance also? I mean, first off, I think it's all about being aware that you're kind of in this moment of like spiritual awakening and then to er- to like tap into it and to tap into me. It's really about just connecting with me, connecting with me on social, connecting on me like wherever I'm at. But really, it's all about connecting to yourself ultimately. And so <laughs> when it relates to, you know, radical self-acceptance, it's really understanding who you are at the core of who you are, your values, your purpose, your passion, all that nitty gritty. Absolutely, I love that message. And and again, I know that you uh, connect with, uh, and your message is directed specifically in your work towards women, but even with me, I think, and for anyone, I think radical self-acceptance is and that journey of just finding yourself, acknowledging not only your strengths, but your weaknesses. I think that's super powerful. Can you give us just a, a little word, just kind of about that, that journey that you were taking? Because you're so transparent and in sharing that on social with so many people. And I'm sure you didn't start off that way. So how do you get to that level of self-acceptance where you're that transparent? And what are other ways that we can kind of share and help others and help ourselves if we're not quite comfortable with, our, with the Joe level of transparency on the gram? You know, I think what it is is ultimately about listening deeply to those messages that come to you in the moment of stillness in the moments where you're feeling um, compressed, in those moments when you're feeling as if the world is crumbling from beneath you and standing firmly in your truth. Mm -hmm. I think each and every single one of us have this ability to tap into ourselves at a deeper level and at a spiritual, emotional, you know, higher level self, whatever that might be. But, you know, I always like think to myself, like who am I really in despite all the things and the layers that 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 like come on top of me okay what can i actually be like when i am fully completely naked and just vulnerable for who i am and also vulnerable in showing up as my most authentic self and so when i think about that like i think about like what it looks like when no one is telling you who you should be right and when you're stepping into what you believe in yourself of who you are, Mm -hmm. not even who you should, but like who you are as like a soul level, as an individual, as a person that is really just navigating this world as the best way that they can. I love that. And yeah, I think like tapping into your energy is really all about shedding all the should stories of what everyone tells you who you should be Mm -hmm. and really just like really like aligning yourself in who you want to be and who you're ultimately trying to become. I love that. That is a word. That is a vibe to start us off. We're going to mix that with the with the cocktail and we're going to get this night started. <laughs> so everybody, we have Joe in the kitchen with us. This is season two, episode five of the cooking, live cooking at the crib. 
Last Supper Society, Ryan Royster. Byron Hughes. And we're about to get cooking ramen and cocktails. As usual, I'm gonna get out the way. I'm going to be in the comments, interact with me, ask me questions for Joe, for Chef, for me, and uh, let's get to cooking. All right, you guys. All right, so here we are once again. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Chef Byron Hughes here. We are making ramen today, and I'm very excited. I hope you have boiling water because we're going to use that soon. Um, other than that, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I literally just got back from Oakland like maybe 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Traffic was brazy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I had a great time out there with the ramen shop crew. Uh, shout out Ray, shout out Sam, shout out Lauren, all the crew over there. They made me lunch today, they made me ramen today. So uh, this is gonna be my second bowl of ramen Here's for the, the day. Other um, if you want super stoked here. to be doing this with you guys. Um, hang on, let me just turn this down. It's getting a little too hot over there, huh? Okay, so uh, we're gonna jump right into this, guys. Um, as usual, let's get all of our ingredients out. We're gonna go over our little inventory list. Yes, sir. Uh, another big shout out to Chef Ray Neal at Ramen Shop. Um, I had like this much knowledge uh, of ramen when we started this. Um, now I have about this much knowledge, but all the knowledge that I gained over the past week is because of him. Um, he laced me with so much game and um, this broth and these ta this tare and this, this fat, like all these different ingredients um, are, were inspired by him and informed by him as well. So shout out Ray, shout out Ray, shout out Ray. And also shout out Mookie too, who put us together. Anyways, let's get to this guys. Um, tomato tonkatsu. A uh, couple quick things about tonkatsu. Uh, pork broth is what it is. Uh, that's what's gonna define the tonkatsu. Um, this is super just, I mean, if it's cold still for you, it's probably still gelatinous. Uh, we'll get to that in a second though. Um, this broth, myself and my sous chef Matt, uh, labored, uh, lots of sweat happened, uh, and it was a very messy process because we made about 35 gallons of it. Um, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen a 35 gallon pot, but it's, it's like this big. So, um, lots of love in that bowl, in that, in that, in that bowl of ramen at the end. Uh, we, we simmered the pork bones with aromatics, garlic, ginger, scallion, uh, I think that's it. Garlic, ginger, scallion. That's it. Um, we, we threw in some smoked pork bones at the very end, uh, some chicken backs, pork feet, and all of those bones and you know, uh, broken bones, all the collagen from that, all the uh, fat from that emulsifies into the broth. Um, and it makes it this crazy rich, delicious uh, stuff which is gonna make our ramen out of control. Okay, number two, pork belly. Uh, there's no skin on this. We, we got it skinned, we skinned it for you guys. Um, so we will need to process that a little bit. Uh, there's a ton of fat on this stuff, so you can cut it to your preference. Um, I like to keep some of the fat on there, but again, this is a very heavy, fatty, rich uh, meal, so maybe you wanna cut some of that fat off. We'll get to that later as well. Uh, cherry tomatoes, uh, this is just what we call toy box. We get it from Produce Express in Sacramento. Um, toy box basically means that it's uh, an assortment of different cherry tomatoes. Uh, some sun golds in here I could see. Maybe some like small early girls, a bunch of different types. I don't even know what all these kinds of uh, tomatoes are, but fun stuff. Uh, negi, not a, not a bad word. Uh, negi is a Japanese word for scallion. Um, I can't not call it that for some reason. I don't know why, I just keep calling it that since I worked in Japanese food. Uh, we cut these super thin for you guys so you didn't have to do that work. Uh, it could be a little bit difficult if you don't have a sharp knife, um, but uh, we cut them and then we rinse them and squeeze them and rinse them and squeeze them so that super uh, raw onion taste is gone. So these are going to be a great garnish on the, uh, on the ramen, I believe. Uh, next up, special ingredient here, the Mayu. Um, if you guys put this in the fridge, uh, it's probably solid now because this is literally solid fat. Uh, but this is a fat or... Uh, we use lard, uh, but it, the fat is made with burnt, burnt garlic and smoked tomato. Uh, that smoked tomato is meant to bring forward the tomato flavor in the dish, uh, which is why I call it tomato tonkotsu. Um, and we're just trying to layer on different levels of uh, tomato flavoring throughout the dish. So it's not super strong tomato flavor, but it is in there and it will accentuate and play with the other tomato flavors really well. Uh, next, the egg. 
Nothing crazy here. Uh, this is just an egg that we hard boiled for seven minutes, cooled it down immediately in an ice bath, and then uh, peeled all of them. Uh, all, I think it was like 180. I think we lost about 30 of them at some point too, um, just from breaking them and cracking them and stuff. Um, shout out my prep team, by the way. <laughs> uh, and then we put it in a marinade overnight, soy, mirin, a uh, little bit of the strong pork stock. Um, delicious. We all know what these are if we've ever been to a ramen. A lot of people were asking Yo, about two eggs I just per. want to say really quick, you yeah. guys, like the fact that you guys did the prep for the ramen egg. Yeah. I mean, that's like love right there because <laughs> this, is the hard, this is one of the hardest parts. So thank you. Very difficult. For very part. difficult. You're very welcome for the eggs. Um, uh, we wanted to do a lot more, but time and, you know, uh, effort just didn't permit. Um, so if you guys got a double kit, you got a single egg, it's meant to be split into two bowls. Um, I know a lot of people were asking us. So uh, if you got a double kit, you got a single egg. Uh, moving on, uh, the tare. So tare is uh, the component of ramen that uh, brings the whole dish to life. So uh, this pork broth has no salt in it. Uh, it's flavored with aromatic and, you know, obviously pork flavor. But there's no salt, there's no like seasoning to it. Um, and so in a ramen, the component that seasons the whole bowl is the tare. Um, you can have a few different kinds of tare. Uh, you can have a miso tare like we have here, which is made from fermented soybeans or miso. Um, there's a shoyu tare, which is uh, made from soy, or a shio tare, which is made from salt. So depending on where you're at, who's making it, you're going to get a different kind of tare in your broth. Uh, today, this one is uh, tomato and miso. So again, we're trying to layer on those tomato flavors in all the different levels of this dish. Um, and I think between these three ingredients, uh, we will have something that's very summery, very uh, tomato-y if you can. Um, we'll talk more about the tare later. Um, probably for me, the most important ingredient is this one right here. Uh, these are the noodles, guys. These are ramen shops. Shout out to ramen shop once again. These are the ramen shop noodles, uh, custom vegan noodles. Uh, there's no egg in these, which is um, a, a pretty typical of ramen noodles, uh, but these, there's no egg in these. They somehow developed a chewy, bouncy, perfect noodle uh, without the egg. So shout out to you guys for doing the work and the magic and also making us like 250 portions of these. Um, these are wonderful noodles. I cannot wait for you guys to try these. If you haven't been to ramen shop, this is not going to be a ramen shop bowl. But uh, we will have ramen shop noodles for show. Uh, last thing, uh, this is just a mixture of soy and mirin. Um, nothing crazy here. Uh, we're going to use this to caramelize our pork belly. Uh, we use dark soy, light soy, a little tamari in there, um, and a little bit of white soy, actually. And then uh, we also added some really high quality mirin, which is like sweetened, uh, sweetened and seasoned Japanese cooking wine. Uh, no booze in this, guys. Don't worry. Whew, that was a freaking mouthful, man. Oh, my goodness. We good. We here. We good, though. I just need to take a little breather. Are you still with me, Joe? Following along? All right, cool. Okay, let's get to the equipment. Um, number one, large pot. We're going to blanch our noodles in here. If you got one of these strainers, you're a real one and you're a smart one as well uh, because this is going to make the job a lot easier. Uh, but if you, know, if you have one of these, you want to make sure that it can clip on the side and it is still almost fully submerged in the water. Um, very important with that. Uh, number two, medium-sized pot. Uh, this is going to build our, we're going to build our broth in here. Um, we'll get to that later. Uh, saute pan right there on my saute station for, you know, doing the tomatoes, doing the pork belly. Uh, we'll do them both in the same pan, two different processes. Um, you need a pair of non-disposable chopsticks. Uh, disposable chopsticks will work too. I just prefer some non-disposable ones. They're a little bit more sturdy and uh, will hold up to uh, the intense motion that we'll do. The wrist motion. Yeah. Wrist motion. Thank you. Uh, and the six is actually in the building. We got someone from Toronto, so we're literally in the six with, with, with the wrist motion. With the motion. wrist motion? Yeah. Wow, you guys. Yeah. A pinnacle of my career. I've said that joke like three times and now it's real for the first time. <laughs> And if you guys don't know out there, the wrist motion is something like this. Hey. Slow motion, and then you can speed with it up. And rip, if you, you kind of hit it with one little sweat. Never mind. Anyways, uh, 
you'll need a few spoons. Mine are in the uh, spoon drawer, or Ryan's spoon drawer. Not my spoon drawer, for sure not my spoon drawer. Um, we got some salt on the table over there. I use kosher salt, diamond crystal kosher. Uh, it's my favorite. And also a whisk. Not totally necessary, um, but it'll kind of help you break up that miso in the broth. Um, you could do it with the chopsticks, you could do it with the spoon, whatever. Uh, not a big deal, but it does help out a lot. Okay, without further ado, guys, we are going to get this party started. Uh, step one, let's get our water back to a boil. It, could, it doesn't need to be a super hard rolling bowl just yet. Uh, so I would say, you know, medium high heat, just bring it back up. Don't worry about it. Um, first thing we're going to do is we are going to work with our pork belly. So let's get our station cleared off and get our pork belly onto the cutting board. Okay, you guys know that pork belly is my favorite, right? Is it really? Oh yeah, you know, Filipinos, we love pork belly. Oh yeah, y'all got the tocino, right? We got tocino, we got... Lechon, I mean, just give us all the pork fat. All about that. Hey, I'm right there with you, bro. All about that. <laughs> okay, guys, um, so nothing crazy here. Um, if you ever had bacon, this is where it comes from. This is unsmoked, uncured bacon, <laughs> essentially. But uh, just raw pork belly. Um, if we just kind of take inventory of it, um, the skin of the belly would be here, and then there's a huge layer of fat, and then we got these little, little bits of meat. Uh, what this is really prized for is probably this section, this section right here, right under this top level of fat. Uh, we get this beautiful um, uh, combination of fat um, and this super, uh, super lean pork down here, and then this like, it's almost like pork toro. Uh, if you're into sushi. So we're going to work with this now. I'm going to bring out my slicer. You guys haven't seen this one on camera yet. Haven't brought this one out yet. This is my, my Kramer. Shout out my guy Ski. Uh, he left this one with me. Very special knife for me. Uh, these long knives are great for pork belly because it's super fatty and we want to do like long slicing motions. Um, so what I'm going to do here guys is I'm going to take again that side that had the, the skin on it. Uh, we're going to try and take some of that off. So just, just use back and forth. Long strokes. Um, if you like your pork belly to super be, fat, be super fatty, leave it on by all means. Uh, don't waste anything. But And this pork belly can be uh, saved, rendered down. Uh, you can keep the fat from it um, and use it for other cooking purses, purposes. Uh, but I'm going to save mine over here because we will keep that. All right, next up, uh, we can cut it into little pieces now. So let's get it flat. Um, I'm gonna go maybe three, three slices uh, long ways. And then from there, we'll cut it into uh, smaller pieces. So there's one slice and two slices. Careful with your fingers. This stuff is pretty slippery because it's very fatty. It's gonna get all over your fingers. All right, there's three slices. Okay, and Joe, just for, for you, we're cutting three slices this way um, across the port. And do it again on the next one. I, I didn't give you guys a lot of pork because it's not the focus. Really, like, especially with ramen, like this is, this is meant to be a topping, like it's a topping, it's a garnish. Um, it's not the star of the dish. It's really just meant to be uh, maybe like a little protein added to the dish or, you know, maybe like, a, you know, kind of like a little treat on top. Okay, so now that we got all these strips, yeah, stuff, some of this stuff is really fatty. We've got all these strips. So I'm going to just take maybe two at a time. And we're going to cut fairly small pieces like this. How you guys doing? Let me know in the chat. Rocky's, Rocky's using all the fat, she says. Go for it. It will not hurt. Real quick, um, Joe, can you tell us a little bit about the charity you chose while we're cutting here? Just a little bit about Loveland Foundation. Yeah, so I chose Loveland Foundation because my journey into wellness and self-discovery all came about because I was about 27, 28 years old, and I had never taken care of myself like as a woman. And so mental health and wellness and emotional wellness was just not something that I grew up learning that it needed to be a priority. And so Loveland Foundation, I discovered recently, and it's a foundation that I actually donate to on a regular. And they are a foundation that is committed to helping 
communities of color, particularly black women and girls, get access to mental health therapy and mental health services. And for me, I just thought, you know, growing up, like I was always taught that like mental, like mental health and mental wellness was just not something that was in my household as a Filipino American. Absolutely. And so I just believe that mental wellness and emotional wellness is something that everyone needs access to and communities that don't have access to them right now are ones that I feel like need it the most, especially, you know, women of color, girls of color, black communities are really needing that, especially during this time. So Love and Foundation really like hit me to the heart just because they are an organization really trying to pioneer that and are really committed to giving access to that mental health therapy and Dope. mental wellness therapy to all the different communities that really need it at this time. Dope. Amazing. All right. Amazing. I mean, yeah. The, the, mental health, the, the mental health conversation, I mean, carries over to the kitchen too. I mean, it's a huge deal. Um, you know, chefs dealing with suicide, alcoholism, uh, I mean, you name it, drug addiction, it, it is it is a big thing in my industry as well. So I, I'm super stoked to be, you know, on the same page about this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's yeah. Rachel Cargill and Loveland. Chef, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Royster. Uh, we got our pork cut up here, guys, just to show you what mine looks like. I mean, they're not huge pieces, pretty small. I want these to cook pretty quick. Uh, we're gonna give them a generous pinch of salt just mix it up we're on our cutting board today we're not i don't think we're cutting anything else right i'm gonna have to cut our egg but we'll wash up that nice generous pinch of salt and we're just gonna let that chill for a little while uh, reason for doing this uh salting it uh before we cook it obviously to season it um but we're also going to draw out a little bit of moisture um salt draws out moisture um and that will actually help it get more crispy in the pan so uh, let it, let's let it sit. Uh, we can move on to our tomatoes next though. So um, grab your tomatoes. We wanna get our pan on the heat. Uh-oh. I swear I got new gas. <laughs> Went stocked up after last week. That was crazy. So we're gonna get this pan like literally ripping hot. Like I wanna see smoke on this pan. Uh, we're gonna blister the tomatoes. Basically what we're trying to do is keep them, you know, keep the integrity of the tomato for the most part but we want that skin to kind of just kind of curl up burn break um, some of that flesh could be exposed so that when we season it um, the salt it can actually get into the tomato so let's get our pan smoking hot uh, that was a cue for ryan to open the windows and everybody uh, behind the cameras are now opening windows and cracking doors <laughs> so we don't pull a, a brian washington and set off the fire alarm shout out to abs shout out to abs one time. <laughs> Okay, what are we doing? We're waiting for the fire. Hey, Joe, we got one more question in the chat for you. Um, let's see where this goes, actually. Um, what's your guilty pleasure, Joe? Oh, um, Kids I in mean, here, kids in here. <laughs> <laughs> my, my guilty pleasure, are we keeping this PG-13 or like what are we I think PG-13 is 13 is good. 13, 13 is good. Shout out to Riley. We might have to earmuff Riley, but we're good. Honestly, one of my guilty pleasures, PG-13, is like Lindsay Lohan movies. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's, it's one of those where like I can watch, I can watch Mean Girls over and over again. And also, um, Will Smith's Hitch. Yeah, oh, oh, it's a, a guilty pleasure of mine. Absolutely. I love Such that. a guilty pleasure. And, and I also think like another guilty pleasure is just like indulging in me time. Yeah, Which I think that. as a mom and as a woman who is constantly working to serve other people is actually a really big guilty pleasure to just indulge in me. Love that. And Love so whatever that. that looks like, if that looks like a, a bath, if that looks like, you know, a spa day for me, mm -hmm. it's kind of a guilty pleasure, but also really necessary for my own self-care. Cool. Love it. Uh, my guilty pleasures include uh, greasy, like, from the hood Chinese food. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Also, McDonald's French fries. Okay, if we're, if we're talking about food guilty pleasures, Taco Bell and fried chicken. There you hey. go. And fried chicken is not a guilty pleasure. Hold on, wait a minute. I mean, it is, 
it oh. is a weekly pleasure. <laughs> I had I had the fried chicken with the habanero honey from Empress today, where you guys picked up uh, yeah. your cocktails that Taylor designed for you, and it is so fire. So okay, fire. Speaking, couple speaking questions of so fire. Um, this pan is about to catch on fire. Yeah. Um, yours should be too. Can they use cast iron? Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so like I always do, guys, I got my pan smoking hot. I'm going to add my fat now, just a little bit, maybe like half a tablespoon. And directly into that, tomatoes. And we added oil, right? Half a tablespoon of oil. Half a tablespoon, maybe, not a lot. And just to show the chopstick bars. Oh, can we get, the, can we get a uh, close-up on the chopsticks right here? Uh, you know who you are. Still got these, and I'm using them. Thank you for these. Oh, that sounded like a little... Okay. It wasn't even like that. Just a little... I'm just not trying to call nobody out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I have a little tomato leaf in here. Let's get that out. Okay, so I got the heat back up on high. We're going to blister these. We can already see the skins are starting to change color. Uh, they're going to start blistering and breaking. That's a good thing. We don't want to cook them down too much. We want to keep them like pretty much like almost raw in the middle. So that's why we're using a super high heat. We're gonna keep moving them around. Should make a lot of smoke. Might spit a little bit at you once they start breaking. Don't be scared. Let them do their thing. Real quick, Chef, as we, I know we're not there yet, but for those who uh, didn't cop the noodle strainer, are we, will we talk about that later? Am I getting ahead of myself or do they yeah. plan for something? I mean, we could talk about it now while we're letting this happen. Um, the, this noodle strainer in particular, um, what it's doing is it's containing the noodles in this one little area, right? So uh, when this is fully submerged, we can contain the noodles in that one little area. And what we want to do is we want to kind of break them up. You guys will see me do this later, but we'll kind of break them up in here. And instead of it just be floating willy-nilly in the plot, uh, we can keep them uh, contained in here. And so in a ramen restaurant or like a pasta restaurant, um, you'll probably find that uh, you'll see like 10 of these in one big thing of uh, boiling water. And uh, in restaurants, oh, look at that. Give your little tomato the shade. They're starting to blister over there. Nice. Uh, but you'll see like 10 of these. Oh, not on the ground. Um, in, in the pot uh, of water with pasta in it. Definitely not on the ground. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, another great thing about these is that once the noodle is actually cooked, you can immediately evacuate it from that cooking environment, which is super important with something that contains flour, or egg, you know, like a noodle. Um, we want to either get it cool, like cool it down in an ice bath, or we want to, you know, get it straight into uh, our bowl of our, our bowl of broth. So this is a great tool for making ramen, for making pasta. Um, very dope. And then even to speak on it more, uh, pasta. When you're making pasta, the pasta water that's left over in that pot is the most important part of making a pasta sauce. Um, that's how it becomes, it sticks to the noodle, that starchy water. So when you dump this into the sink, into a strainer, you're literally losing all of that starchy water. With this, we can just take the noodles out and we have all the starchy water to work with. Dope. Thank you. All right, so our tomatoes are blistering. Nice, they're starting to break a little bit. See those skins starting to break, they're getting softer. I'm pretty happy with where these are at. Got a nice color on them. Uh, we can season them. Anybody who was wondering, I know you guys were thinking it, but not putting it in the chat. Byron does have pants on under that apron. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but he does okay. have pants on. So okay. if you guys were wondering, they are there. They're, They're shorts. shorts here, y'all. Nike shorts are okay. tucked under the apron. I'm just trying to show a little leg today, you guys. <laughs> I got this from Ryan, you know, Ryan Royster, just taking hey. a page out of his book. Hey. All right, tomatoes are blistered, seasoned. We can get these in a different pan or a different uh, container. Keep this thing moving. Guys, you can grab strainers like that at somewhere like Restaurant Depot in Sacramento or Chef's Toys in Oakland if you guys are out there. Yeah, another hack for those things or finding those things that I didn't even think about when we were getting them, Asian Market. Asian Market, I actually called the Asian Market just in case uh, and the one on Broadway did not have them. Wow, um, I'm surprised. But yeah. All right, so it got a little smoke in here so we're gonna try and get some of this smoke out. Yeah. Sorry. Chris is <laughs> trying to, wait, maybe open the window behind you. Nah, we're good. Okay, we're good. All right, we're good. We're fine. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next step. We got our tomatoes blistered. Let me see. What did I say to do next, you guys? Okay, we're going to work with the pork belly. So your pan should 
it'll be pretty clean, honestly, um, and it should still be hot also. So let's add a little bit of fat so that it's not touching just hot metal as soon as it hits. I'd say another maybe half tablespoon for adobo. Um, but you, we've already gone over how much fat is in this stuff. Uh, so it's going to release a lot of that fat into the pan. So we don't need to start off with a lot. So I'm going to go directly in with this. Nice sizzle already. And we're going to cook this on like medium low. Uh, the goal here is to render off a lot of that fat. Once we render that fat, it'll start to get crispy. Um, that's a good thing. Crispy is good, by the way. Hey, let me know in the chat where you guys are with your drinks, too, and how those drinks were. So I'm let me try know. I'm going to get this on this high-powered burner right here. So we're just going to kind of shake it around a little bit, guys. We're going to get try and get like a sear on it real quick. I'm actually going to go up to about medium heat. So we're going to get a sear on this first, and then we're going to crank it down and let it just render slowly. And render, uh, what is render? Uh, we're using a slow, gentle heat to coax the fat from the pork, um, away from the pork. Starting out a little sear here. And remember, it's already seasoned. Um, no need to add any more salt. While we're letting that sear, I'm gonna do a little cleanup action. I suggest you do too. Maybe wipe your board off. Yes, sir. We don't have any Joe, how there. are you doing like following that. along? You good? You caught up? I mean, you know, I'm not really always in the kitchen. So <laughs> this is like fun and interesting for me. I usually have men cooking in me, like cooking in the kitchen for me. Okay. So. I see how you do, okay. Joe. <laughs> you got like teaching some people in the chat. Also, you might have to like teach. fanning you with the giant palm leaf. <laughs> I mean, I, I, bring, I bring home the bacon. Someone else cooks it for me. Hey. hey. Okay. I'm bringing Belly and cooking it tonight. Yes. I see you. Yes. Hey, I like your but style. I like it. I like your I like style. It. It's I cool. saw it's when cool. when Joe came to pull up to uh, pick up her separate kid today. She was like, "Yo, do you think uh, ramen shop will let me borrow a pot?" And I was like, <laughs> uh, first of all, why don't you got a pot, girl?" <laughs> Second of all, I don't know. Restaurants don't usually do stuff like that, especially if you don't know them. And then uh, hey, but but Chef came out. Had, a, had someone over there, Filipinos. <laughs> Filipinos, we always, we always look out for yeah, each that was a, Oh, that was a Filipino thing, huh? <laughs> Joe, you better use that that influencer status to give uh, ramen chop some... some... It was definitely a Filipino thing. No, I'm saying you better use that influencer status to shout ramen chop out a couple extra ones for the pot. <laughs> I love the ramen chop. They're my people, you know? Oh, they, yeah. they were wearing a look shirt today, so we're okay, all guys. good. We're all good. Uh, we're moving along here. I've turned the heat on this down to like medium low. You should start be getting, you should be starting to get a sear um, on it. Something like this right here. You can get a little close up on the uh, sear. Look at that golden brown, delicious situation. Hey, uh, shout out the Lawson fam cooking right together. Now. Here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> here right here. Let me see. Get this close. Yeah, pork belly, baby. <laughs> All right, pork belly's got a nice sear on it. I'm going down to medium low, maybe even like lower than that. Maybe a two on the Richter scale. That was a, a Big Trouble Little China reference. Anybody? Jack Burton? No? Thank you. <laughs> Keep it moving, guys. Don't let it stick. And right now, we're just going to let it cook low. Again, render off as much fat as possible. Look at how much fat is in that pan already. So we're probably going to need to uh, evacuate some of that fat at some point. But it's totally fine right now. Let it do its thing. Happy birthday, shout outs. We got LaMonica, happy birthday, and Jazz, happy birthday. Happy LaMonica. LaMonica, La shout out to you. It's your birthday. And Live Jazz, happy birthday. Black happy birthday song real quick. Happy birthday to you. I think, we, I think, happy I think I'm going to pour up a nice little kitchen, happy kitchen birthday, shot, birthday shot. Happy While we're waiting. I got a little carried away, but we got. Uh, can I interest you in a birthday shot? For the birthday yeah, game? let's get a birthday shot for oh, the. Are we taking it out of it's that? It's a little chinky, not a little. We can't do the shot glass or. No, no, we're in the kitchen, bro. We're in okay. the kitchen. This is how we do All it. Right. My bad. My etiquette up. Yeah, this is how we do it. Just in case your boss walks in, you know, you take it and it doesn't look like you're drinking. Hey, shout out to Forge Gin. Oh yeah. Forge Gin, for bringing <laughs> us this cocktail magic with Taylor Sampson. Shout out to Empress Tavern, and the Ramen Shop Oakland. 
for activating the cocktail program, y'all. And happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, LaVonica. Sipping out the Tupperware one time. Mm. Mm. Tastes better out of plastic. Oh, oh God. God. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> it's actually good gin, though. It's not like other, like it doesn't hurt as bad. I just, I'm just very over dramatic. Okay, nice. Uh, moving on, guys. I think it's time to start building our broth. What do you guys think? Should I make it on, should I make it on the stove or should I make it on the stove? Okay, so we're gonna do it on stove. So I've got my medium pot here. Uh, we're gonna get it, I don't know, let's say medium heat as, as well. Start getting it warm. Actually, we can go medium high because we're gonna. What we're gonna do now is we're going to sear our our tare. Um, so inside of this tare, what's inside? Uh, we have some roasted tomato paste. Uh, obviously, the fermented soybean, the miso. Um, what else is in here? Uh, we put a little bit of the strong pork stock, which is um, in, it's almost like a double reduced pork stock. Um, I think that's it. So when we put this into a hot pan, those sugars from uh, the miso paste, the sugar from the tomato paste, are going to caramelize. It's going to uh, make a more complex uh, flavor. Uh, so you can take, I actually invite you guys to taste a little bit of stuff now so you know what you're working with. It's a little tiny long. It's strong, be careful. Hey Byron, that's in the larger container, yeah? Because I've got like these two, so just making sure. Yeah, the larger one. The larger one. Cool. It should have like almost like an oranges kind yep. of hue to it. Yes. Um, look at our pork belly, guys. Mad crispy. Just let it keep rendering off that fast. and it keep getting crispy. Keep that thing on low. Don't burn it. Okay. So, miso paste. So, I'm preparing enough broth for... Two bowls. No, I'm no, no, I'm doing one bowl. I'm doing one bowl. Sorry, I'm doing one bowl. I'm I'm like the I, I haven't eaten. I, I mean, I've already eaten ramen today, so you, oh, okay. you can eat it. Good looking out there. Um, so, single portion. You're looking at about one and a half, two ounces of tare. Um, these containers for the double portion are three and a half ounces. So, you know, you're probably going to be using almost all of this. Um, so for a double portion, you're going to want to use that full thing. Single portion, you're probably going to want to use around full thing too. Um, but again, taste this. Make sure uh, it's not too strong for you. Um, and, you know, if, if you're not sure, um, just add a little bit uh, less than you think you need. And then you can always add in more at the end. So uh, my pan's pretty warm here. I'm going to use about... There we go, got it in there. And not much is gonna happen here. It's not gonna appear like a lot is happening, but that's okay. We should hear, so, we should at least hear it. Um, and my pork belly, guys, is pretty much done here. And this is a lot more fat than I expected. So we're gonna have to do something about that. If your pork belly's looking like mine, nice and crispy, golden brown, let's get it out of the fat. Slotted smooth might help here. Uh, we're at Ryan's house, so probably doesn't exist. Of course. Oh, of course. yeah, we got one. We got one. We got one. He tries to slander the kitchen <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so I'm taking this out of the fat for now. We'll put it back in. I know the instruction don't say that, but this happened a little bit faster than I expected. So um, get that crispy pork belly out. Let it chill out. And we are going to uh, let that cool off so we can get it out of the pan. Uh, back to our miso paste. So, there we go. We're starting to hear it, hear it sizzle and burn. and It's going to start sticking to the bottom of the pan. Totally fine. Totally fine. Because the next component that's going to go in is the actual broth. Um, it'll actually act as a deglaze and get all the uh, crispy bits off the bottom. Um, and, and it'll also be building our broth. So let it go. Um, I don't know how well... You can see that on the stove cam, but it's starting to stick here. That's good. It's starting to burn and caramelize. That's good. Let it do its thing. And I, again, I'm on like I'm on a seven on this electric stove or uh, induction stove. Sorry. Ooh, that gin got me sweating, brother. 
<laughs> All right. So we're moving this stuff around. You guys still with me over there? All right. So I'm starting to see a little bit of caramelization on there. I'm starting to smell it. For the most part, it's getting really fragrant. So I think I'm ready. Uh, have your whisk ready as well. Rocky, what'd you burn the bottom of? Oh, jeez. Rocky said, is it fine if I burn the bottom of it? I don't know what she Yeah, doing. yeah, we're, we're, lo we're looking for not so much burnt, but caramelization. When it's caramelizing, you'll, you'll smell it. You'll smell it start to change. Yeah, it'll, maybe it'll smell burnt to you, but uh, this is like intentional burning. We're not gonna turn it black. Um, we just wanna burn a little bit of it. You, as you can see mine, most of it is still good, um, but I'm starting to get a little bit of those burnt bits on the bottom. Black lives do matter though, but we, we good. <laughs> You know um, and now I have my tonkotsu bra, and we're going to go directly in with that stuff. All right. Put that in. And with the whisk, if you got one or a wooden spoon or something, just get in there and really just get on the bottom of that pan. Get those burnt bits. Beautiful. Oh, this is that wrist motion they were talking about. Rip, 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 rip. Uh, we're building our broth, guys. Uh, medium high, medium heat. We're going to bring it up to a boil, and then we're going to immediately turn it down. So let it do its thing. Keep an eye on it. We're chilling. Um, I think our fat might be easy, and easy enough to uh, handle now. Or cool enough, I mean. I don't know what I'm saying. Joe, checking in. What's popping? You good? Yeah, yo, I got I got one too many pans on the stove right now. <laughs> what are all these pans you're talking about? I mean, I mean, there's pans, there's pots. It's all good. It's all good. There's, you know, my broth is going, my my water nice. is boiling. Nice, nice. Um, so guys, I've taken all that fat out of my pan. Um, we don't need all that, but I will add just a little bit. Just a tad. Careful, this stuff is very hot. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, I understand. But, you know, you're cooking chef style today, so get with it or get lost. Uh, pork belly's going back in. Don't need to turn the heat on yet. We're still kind of waiting for a few things to come together. What else do we have to do? There's not much. What do we got? We're almost there, you guys. Actually, we are going to get our heat on now. I think we could do this. So I'm going medium, medium high. Uh, we got the fat out of the pan. Uh, maybe go grab another little container and add some water to it. This won't be that smoky, Ryan, I promise. Almond broth is working. We want it to boil again. We want that, that fat to re-emulsify into the broth so it all just becomes one. Um, now it'd actually not be a bad time to taste your broth now that it, because it's not so hot. Check the level of the miso, the salt. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a little bit more miso on mine. For show. I forgot that I just put a double portion of broth in there, so I'm gonna just do a double portion of miso. So, guys, all of my miso's in at this point. Uh, we're doing uh, 32 ounces or a, a double order of broth. Let's get it all in. Alyssa is not sure if her pork belly is done. She's trying to see what it's supposed to look like or something. Oh, you see it? Check it. Right here. It's crispy, it's brown. Nice. Oh, oh. Again, guys, this is like, you need to be thought about as a topping or a garnish. Pan's hot again. So I got some water here, careful. Just give it a little bit glaze. And what we're doing by doing that is we're gonna soften up the pork a bit with the steam, but also we are making a base for our, um, our sauce here to hit. Why are we doing that? We are doing that because when soy sauce touches hot metal, uh, it burns. And burnt soy sauce is not a pleasant flavor or taste or anything. So I've added a little bit of water so it gives like a buffer in between the pan and the sauce. So. Let a little bit of that water cook off. And then I'm gonna go directly in with my soy mirin mixture. It should start to glaze and bubble immediately. Keep it moving so it doesn't burn. Look at that. 
I'm like medium heat right now. And we're just gonna let this kind of reduce, glaze, and get sticky. If the liquid is looking like it's not enough in the pan, you can add a little bit of water, no big deal. Uh, we just don't want that soy to burn. So just keep, just kinda keep moving it. Keep moving it. Gonna glaze, glaze, keep moving it. Maybe lower it down a little bit to medium low. Flamestorm? Yeah. Broth is coming up slowly, but surely. Just crank my heat on that. Check your water level on your uh, noodle pot as well. Um, if the water is looking a little low, you can top it off, but I think this should be about fine. Okay, check this out, guys. We're now glazing. Um, you see that sauce start to reduce and caramelize a little bit, and now it's coating the pork belly um, instead of just sitting in the bottom of the pan. I want to go just a little bit longer. Move it, move it, move it. A little bit longer, and then off with the heat. And you could just leave that in the pan for now. We'll get back to that later. Lady, it's not helping it. Lady, where you at? I'm busting you out on, on TV, kind of TV. <laughs> Lady is Abs' daughter, who oh, was a huge ramen, ramen fan. Shout out Excuse to Lady. Me. All right, do a little bit more cleanup action here. Look at this nice glazed pork belly. The academy is open. Tap in. Get in shape. Beautiful. Yeah. I really want to eat that, but it's uh, got caramelized burnt sugar on it, so I'm not touching that. It's probably like molten lava. I've cranked my broth up to, up to just high, you guys. Let's just get this thing going. I'm whisking, I'm trying to get it just, you know, keep, keep that fat emulsifying into the broth. Very important step. I'm gonna get this out of the pan now. Pork candy, pretty much. Pork candy. <laughs> it's gonna play nicely with the, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, they're trying to tell me to eat this on the, behind the camera. They want me to, they want me to hurt myself. You don't want to eat this either, bro. Do you know how hot this must be? These guys obviously never burn himself with caramel. So, <laughs> check in, Joe. What's popping? You caught up? You good? I mean, it's all good over here. I'm just trying to figure out what he's doing over there with his pork. What are you doing with your pork? Uh, I just took it out of the pan. Okay. Just a habit, habitual thing. As long as it's glazed and coated, um, it's fine to take out. Is it is it glazed and looking brown and super ah. sexy? Is that what's happening to the pork? Hey. I don't know why I did that. Hey, we got Megan in the chat. She is asking, was the mayu supposed to go with the pork belly? No. Nope. Nope. Um, the mayu is going to go on at the very, very, very end. Once broth is boiling, what should they do? Broth is boiling. Make sure give it a good whisk. And if your pork's ready, we can get the broth into the bowl. Um, mm. I actually had a chat with Ray about this earlier today. Ray. Broth in the bowl first or noodles in the bowl first? Up to your preference. Today, we're gonna put the broth into the bowl first. So I've got this up to a boil. Nice. I'm gonna give it a whisk and kind of help emulsify it back in. Beautiful. Should the broth still be boiling right now? Uh, yeah, it should, have, it should have reached a boil. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's my bowl. Um, and I'll measure this so you guys can see how much I'm doing. I feel like talking in ounces is pointless. So uh, if you have a double portion, this is what your tomatoes came in. This is 16 ounces, this little line right here. Um, we want about 16 ounces per bowl. So if you have one of these bad boys, uh, 16 ounces. If you have one of these bad boys or bad girls, um, this is eight ounces. So this line right here is eight ounces. So you would need two of these as well, uh, if you want to measure. Um, if not, you know, it's totally fine. I'm just trying to give you a point of reference. So let's do this. We got our nice hot broth. No need for a whisk anymore. I'm going to measure mine. The ratio of noodle to broth is pretty important. So beautiful. 
16-ish, 15, depending on what size your bowl is. I like a nice tall bowl. We'll see how much this bowl can even fit. We don't want to go too much. Wow, it's a perfect bowl. Perfect bowl. Got a little ounce left over. Nice. All right, guys. Brought in the bowl. We're moving fast here. Uh, let's do our noodles. Uh, your water should be boiling. If it's not, you're screwing up, but that's okay because you're cooking at the crib. It's not a big deal. Um, get my noodles out. I'm going to put them into my hand first. All right, they're in my hand. All right, and I'm going to drop them into the basket outside of the water and just kind of loosen them a little bit with your fingers into the basket, directly into the broth. And for our basket challenged people. Basket challenged people, I guess you're just throwing the noodles directly into the broth. Um, not a big deal. We don't need this water afterwards, um, so not a big deal. Um, cook time, uh, another thing I asked Ray about. Uh, it varies, uh, so many different factors going to making noodles, uh, from humidity to just uh, saturation of the dry ingredients uh, with water. Um, so it's always going to vary, but his um, suggestion for today's noodles was about a minute and a half um, at a full boil. So minute and a half, guys. What are we using to wrangle loose noodles? <sighs> you should be using a noodle strainer. <laughs> yeah. What are we, are Chopsticks we using? help, I guess. Uh, um, what about like a spoon with a slotted spoon or something like uh, that? Spoon's not really going to do much because trying to pick up noodles with a spoon is nearly impossible. Um, but if you, you can use them to kind of, you can use a spoon to kind of stir it. Um, but that's the idea behind a strainer like this, guys. It keeps it contained. We can, we can just keep an eye on it right here. We know where all of our noodles are at. Shout out, Gerlene. She said she's our biggest fan. Mm -hmm. I didn't know we had fans. Oh, shit. So shout out to having taste a taste one real fan. quick. Oh, can I grab one? Am I able? Wow, that was difficult. Take one of these bad boys. It's done. So noodle comes directly out. Shake, 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 You could say we sent the nudes into the, no? We just sent nudes into the ramen. <laughs> okay. We just sent Do nudes that. into the ramen. Do that verification there. Are you guys sending nudes to the bowl? <laughs> we did. You guys are totally we did. The only place the you should ever send them. Okay, and after I've the got them in with my chopsticks, I'm just gonna go in and just kind of give them a mix. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm just making sure the noodles and the broth become good friends. Um, and it's not just like a solid chunk of noodles in there, kind of loosen them up. And I'm also going to kind of pull up a little bit in the center so that we can display the noodles a little bit on the bowl as well. Nice! The smoked tomato and burnt garlic mayu is coming soon. Coming, it's coming guys, I it's promise. Um, and if, you're, if your mayu is still uh, pretty solid, what you can do, if you have a noodle strainer, you could literally just pop this into your noodle strainer and just warm it a bit. The reason that it's solid is because it's literally pure fat. So uh, the heat will cause it to break down a little bit. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Nice, see how fast that is? I'm gonna spill a little bit of it. Careful with that, guys. That is an advanced technique. Okay, Mayu, out. All right, we need to move fast here because everything's cooling off at a very rapid rate. Yay um, Collective said, what about a spider? I don't even know what a spider is. Yeah, you can use a spider. If, if you have the skills to do noodles in a spider, by all means, do it. A spider is like a, it's like a mesh, like large mesh spoon. All right, um, we're going to the plate, guys. Do we have plating music this week? Plating we plating music popping. Joe, we got some plating music this week. This is, shout out to... Uh, this is more like topping and garnish, garnish Ooh, music. Garnish right? music. Okay. Okay. So everybody, we are going to the plate and you know what that means. That means we are doing our plating challenge. 
whoever has the most fire plating is going to win dinner on us next week. What you have to do is take a picture before you dive in and grub this. You need to tag us at Last Supper Society. You need to use hashtag the cook in and you need to post that on the gram. You know what? Tag at GoFitJoe also so she can help us pick the winner. Um, you know how we do. Tap in. You guys, a lot of you guys are hashtag challenged, so it's hashtag the cook in at Last Supper Society. Don't be afraid to put it on your feed. It won't mess up your aesthetic. It's not, <laughs> it's not that fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, go ahead, throw it on there. Throw it on the story. Um, and we'd love to see it. All right, so we're plating. Here we go. How's that plating music, y'all? To the plate. I to wonder the plate. if it's good. I don't even know what it is. I can't hear it. <laughs> so funny. Gina Ambrose. <laughs> Gina Ambrose, this video will be up forever. So you can view Some it later. Here. You guys need to re-watch this. Listen to what Joe was telling you about radical self-acceptance. When Find you guys yourself. are plating this too, we really need to think about how we're gonna eat it too. That's a big part of the composition of a ramen bowl, yeah? So um, think about how it's gonna be eaten, how you wanna serve it to somebody, how you want somebody to approach that, approach that bowl. I mean, food is all about love, right? All so about it's love. all about like how you're serving that love to people. Absolutely. Yes, serve the love. I'm going Maybe to I'm radically not. accept this bowl of ramen when Byron's done. Oh, I'm, I'm radically accepting everything at this moment right now. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, last little bit, or actually there's one more bit after this. So the Mayu uh, does need a little stir. All that burnt garlic went to the bottom. So give it a little stir. We lost the light. We good. And we're just gonna drizzle this stuff over. This is that final fatty component that's really just gonna make this bra this this bowl of ramen so freaking delicious. And we haven't messed with the soy yet, or have we messed with the soy yet? Yeah, the soy went into the uh, the pork to caramelize it. Oh right. All right, I'm good on that. Gail, you missed the soy step. Last step. Our egg. Now, uh, if you're using a knife, grab your sharpest one. We're not gonna be sawing at this thing. Uh, we are going to, this is one of the few times where I want you to put pressure uh, directly down. So, um, get a little incision in first, and then just push, push. Wow, jammy eggs, y'all. Beautiful team. And there we have it, y'all. And there it is. Tomato tonkatsu, uh, smoked tomato and burnt garlic mayu, caramelized pork belly, blistered summer tomatoes, green onions, and a seasoned egg. Get that pick. <sighs> Did Take it. that pick you before it, you dive in. Because I know you want to eat it. It looks beautiful, regardless whether it is a masterpiece or a beautiful mess. We want to see it, share it. Um, we had a good time. Joe, you have a good time? I had a great time cooking in the kitchen tonight. Hey. Right. I'm glad we could do something to get Wait. you in the kitchen, Joe. We That's got awesome. you Joe in the kitchen, yo. <laughs> She's usually Joe's just getting... usually in the kitchen, just grazing around. Just, just getting fed grapes. And <laughs> getting fanned and fed grapes. You guys need to learn some, some game from Joe. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, so, we're going to take, take a little food selfie really quick. Yeah, now. let's get like, that food so selfie. Out. All for the gram. You guys got to. For the gram. For yes. the gram. Let's get this for the gram. And Joe, after you pick, you got a, you got a little word for us, for the people in the chat. Again, maybe to tap in with you. Um, and maybe something to just take away as they dive into their ramen on their Friday night. Just a, just a little word for the people. Yeah, you know, I think what's coming up for me right now and what's coming up for a lot of my clients in this moment is that we are in a transitionary moment in life. And there is so much chaos happening. There is so much change. All of us are really deeply evaluating what it means to be in our values and what it means to be in alignment with our purpose and our passion and all of that. 
just real goodness of who we are deep on a soul level. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, the one thing that's coming up for me in terms of like just tapping in and the message, I guess, is whatever it is that you're experiencing in this moment, know that it is happening to you and for you for a reason and for a purpose. And in this moment, you're probably feeling a lot of upheaval, a lot of confusion and a lot of uncertainty. And you're wanting to grasp onto moments that feel grounding. And what I want to just say is like, let love in and let life happen as it unfolds and let yourself really just embrace the messiness and the beauty simultaneously all at the same time. I love that, Joe. Cause, Thank you. Because right now we don't know what life is going to be like in a year. So just embrace whatever is coming at you in this moment. I love that, Joe. Hey, you guys, yeah, this game. was season two, episode five of The Cook In, Ramen and Cocktails with Joe Encarnacion. At GoFitJoe, tap in with her. Make sure you're following her. Follow us if you're not. And if you're not, what are you doing? At Last Supper Society. We're going to vibe out and kick it for a little bit. We'll throw some music on. Joe's going to hang out for a second while she eats. Uh, bring your people out, eat whatever you want to do, Joe. Everybody enjoy. We enjoyed you guys as we do every Friday. We have another special episode coming up next week. I say that every week because they're all special. New partnerships. We got you something fire to sip on. We got some nice little, uh, we're taking you on a little journey with the flavors too next week. Ooh. Shout out to our girl, uh, Alexandra Z. Check her out on uh, the gram also. She's going to be in the kitchen with us. But, hey, we love you guys. Happy Friday. We appreciate you guys tapping in. Uh, check out the Loveland Foundation. They're doing great things. Support them. Or if you need their resources, make sure you check in with yourself and then tap in with them. Shout out to Ford's Gin, our guy Kevin over there Kevin. Who, who never stops working. Helped us put this all together. Shout out the Ramen Chop, these amazing noodles, plus their amazing team at the bar. Shout out Jasmine. Um, shout, shout out, out Taylor. Taylor, <laughs> Taylor who whipped yes. up the sorcery and, and magician moves on the, on the drink. Shout out to Empress Tavern today where you guys picked up. Um, man, I'm exhausted. I'm going to sip on this Forge Gin. Cocktails are already gone. Uh, we're going to eat some ramen and vibe out. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.